Hey Jackals, today we will take a look how to apply 6 different videos to a cube and then you can animate the cube just like this one and you can also do this with different shapes like triangles and in this case the animation is a bit too fast. Now let's get digital. Now the first thing that I want to show you is that all of the clips that I've used are actually different sizes. So we have this resolution, this one, this one, this one, and well, we have two more. And as you could see, all of them were different. The only limit that I've set was that the height and the width should be at least 1080p. You should then put all of the clips on the timeline that you want to use. Well, you don't have to, but just find the shortest one. You can also see the duration of the clip. And why I want to do that is, well, if you want to put all the clips, this is the shortest one. If you want to put all the clips into the cube, you want the fusion composition to be as long as the shortest clip. In this case, it's this one. You'll then right click, make a new fusion composition, put it onto a timeline and simply extend it so it matches the shortest clip. You can then delete the clip, select the fusion composition and go into the fusion page. Now, if you wanted to, you could also put all of the clips onto the timeline make a new fusion composition out of them and then when you go into the fusion page we'll have all of the six clips already in the fusion composition. So now I'll simply put the clips inside. So I have six clips and I have a media out and I want to put these clips into a cube. The easiest way to do that is with a node, it actually exists, control space or shift space, type in cube and you have cube 3D. It has a bunch of inputs, we'll simply drag them onto the cube, I'll display it on the left and with the cube selected you can also adjust the position and rotation but if I connect it to the media out I can't because this is a 3D space so we need a 3D render node. I can connect it now but this is the default view so if you want to change it you will need a camera node and position it here, don't connect it to the 3D node. I'll zoom out a little bit and then you simply drag out the camera and then when you move the cube, you see that the camera changes with it. So that is why I connect it to a separate node and then when you animate the cube 3D, the view changes. Now why do I have different shades in the cube? All that has to do with the cube 3D, you will have to go to the material and you have different faces and you will have to change all of them to white color. So only the back face has the white color, the others you will have to change manually. Now let's take a close look at the cube by simply animating it a little bit and going over the clips. Maybe this face is okay, but it does look a little bit squashed. Let's go to a second face. This one looks okay. This one is a bit stretched, I believe. This one is definitely squashed. Then you have this one. This one should be okay. And then lastly this one. This one is also squashed. So what can you do? Well, you should use a crop node after all of the media ins. And what this will do is that it will crop the image to what you actually want. And in this case, I'll limit it to 1080p or 1080 by 1080. And when you do this, I'll just display it. It looks something like this. So you may also want to position the X and Y offset depending on the resolution of the clip. So now I'll simply copy this crop node, select the second media in so it connects it automatically when I paste it in, display it, this looks okay. Display this one, this one doesn't look okay, so I'll adjust the Y offset. And it's not adjusted enough, so I'll type in a custom value, 2000, and adjust it from there. Maybe something like this. Now I'll copy this node, paste it here. This one's way off, so I'll just set the values to default. This is 1080 by 1080 by default, so the X and Y offset have to be zero. This one also has a different resolution, and I could adjust the Y offset. And the last one also has to be adjusted, maybe something like this. 
and now the cube should have the same sides as what we see in the cropped nodes. Now you can also add some edge to the elements and maybe offset so you have empty space in between if you want. And the way I've done it is use a merge node with rectangle shape. So you'll simply uncheck the solid, adjust the border width, and then you'll have to adjust the width and the height. I'll just paste this for all of the crop nodes. You can simply hold the shift to get the blue markings on the line, then release the node and it will automatically connect. So now all of the elements have a white outline. And when we spin this round, we also have a white outline if you want to change the color. So how you can do this is connect the rectangle and put the background in between. Go to the background, set the width and the height to 1080 by 1080 or the same value as you have in the crop. And then in the rectangle, you simply adjust the width and the height to one. And then you can simply go to the background and adjust the color to the color that you want. And also adjust the border width in the rectangle because this is basically now half of the actual border width because you see half and the other half is here. And now if you wanted to have some offset from the elements, you can use another crop node. I'll just copy this one paste it here so I'll just show you on one element. You'll want to increase this size from the default value of what you used in this node. So let's say I'll use 1200 by 1200 and as for the offset we have to use the difference between this value and this value and divide it by 2. So we have 120 divided by 2 so it's 60 and we have to use minus, so minus 60 and minus 60. So we now have an offset of minus 60 pixels on all sides. And you can do this for all of the other sides if you want to. Now this is how you can do this effect with the built-in node. All that you have to do is to animate the rotation and the translation. Keyframe it, spin to the other side. And you'll also want to keyframe all of the other positions. And then you'll basically have to play around because when you adjust one side, the rotation will change. And maybe not in the way that you want. As you can see, in this case, I would have to flip it around if I wanted this image to be in the correct orientation. So in this case, I'll keyframe all, come back here, and spin this around. And when you do this animation, everything is all set up for you because the cube is already in the center. But now I'll show you the manual way that you can also apply to other shapes. So I'll just copy the media ins and these crop nodes. And now what we want to do is basically put these nodes, these images, into an image plane. So it's basically an image inside the 3D space. So I'll make five more copies. Everything applies the same as it did here, so if you want the outlines and the offset, you would apply this before the image plane connection. We'll want this to enter out, so we need this at the end. We also need a camera and connect it like so. So now we have all of the images on the same plane. I suggest to leave the first one as is, so it has the front view, and the other ones will change the rotation. So this one can be bottom, why not? So 90 degrees and we have to offset the y-axis by minus 0.5 and also the z-axis by minus 0.5. So basically what we want to do is to line all of the images so we get a cube. So we now have the cube, we can rotate it, but as you can see, this is the center point and you want the center point to be in the center of the cube. So in this case, we just have to use the value of minus 0.5 in the z-axis of the pivot point. So now we'll get rotations that we want. And we can use this rotation to animate the cube. And again, if you connect the camera like this, move it back 
it works if you rotate this it doesn't so you need another mirage node to have a different camera view. Now I've also done this effect with triangles and I'll just show you how I made that effect. So you have the media in and the crop. In this case I just have the mask, so a mirage node displayed on the left side. So this is 1080 by 1080 and I've adjusted the positions. Then I've added the background and lower the alpha so it's not black. And as for the triangle, how you get it is you use a polygon and then with the polygon selected simply right click, go to polygon effect mask and select triangle and you'll get a same side polygon if this is of the same size 1080 by 1080. If this was a different size you'll get a different triangle. So if I show you on this clip you can see that this is not the same triangle. So you have to use it on a background that has the same size. In this case it's 1080 by 1080 in the background node. So that's how you can easily get the same side the triangle. I've then connected this to an image plane and what you have to do is you can use the same values when it comes to the angle and let me just display this one so we have the whole pyramid. So this is my front face, I've just adjusted the X rotation by minus 16.8 degrees. Then it's this face, on the right side the rotation is again minus 16.8 but the Y rotation is 120 and you'll have to adjust the X and Z values by eyeballing this. So you'll probably have to zoom in and in this example I've added some space to this. But you'll basically have to hold control to get fine tunement. Maybe adjust it like this. Now with the triangle, because it doesn't look as good as it does with the cube, I would suggest you actually use the outlines and maybe also some spacing with the crop. And then we have the left face which has the same X rotation but minus 120 on the Y axis and again adjust the values and when you do you can adjust first the left or the right side and then just copy these values and the X value will be just the minus value in the other face. And as for the bottom one this one will change a little bit and what will change when you view it as a whole is that you'll actually have to go to the triangle and I suggest you go to the beginning maybe something like this and with the triangle selected and simply click and drag this edge to where it's supposed to be. And what you'll also notice is that the center is now way off so you also have to adjust the pivot point if you want to get a better animation. And this will change depending on the 3D object that you want to make. In this pyramid, the center position is somewhere below this grid. As for the actual animation, you can use the merge 3D node or you can also use a transform node separately, which also has the pivot point if you want to adjust it. Then everything else is the same and at the end if you want to change the size of the resolution of the whole composition, you can do it with the background node connected to the merge. In this case, I have lowered it to 1920 by 1080. And also, if the animation doesn't look correct, you may want to go to the render node and also change the image size to 1080 by 1080 or whatever the value of the crop nodes that you've used. And that's it. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon and until next time Jackals, keep it digital.